your local election headquarters. We got an all-star panel this week. I, I'll, I'll say that with confidence. From the Fresno City and County Republican Women Federated, Diane Pierce back with us. Always good to have you here, Diane. Thanks for having me, Evan. Absolutely. She's a political science professor at Fresno State. Always nice to have Lisa Bryant. Hello. Nice he to be here. Yeah, nice to have <laughs> you here. And back with us, a reporter with the Fresno Bee, Tim Sheehan. Tim, good to see you, sir. Thank you, Evan. So, Tim, I, I do want to start with you. It was your article that I brought up to Andrew Jans in, in the, a couple segments ago, mm -hmm. uh, talking about the voter registration in the 22nd district. Yeah. Voter registration is up overall, but as you pointed out, Democrats only gaining a, a slim margin of, of seats here. There's not been a lot of leverage or a lot of movement in there. The, the Republicans, since the primary, have lost 815 voters, 800 and some odd voters. The Democrats have gained a little over 100 voters in the district. So, you know, the margins aren't really widening there, widening or narrowing there. What we are seeing is that out of the total gain of some 5,100 votes, or 5,100 voters in registration, the biggest shift has been in the no party preference. Mm -hmm. And those numbers have gone up 5,600 since the primary. So there's been some shift from some of the existing voters from their parties to no party preference since the primary. Lisa, what's, what's the shift all about? And is it more Republicans going to the no party preference? Or is it more Democrats? Or do we know? Well, so... Because I can imagine Possibly some people a little might bit assume. of both. Yeah. So we have a term for it actually, and it's called party flipping. And party flipping itself is pretty rare. <laughs> Usually people make a gradual shift to another party, so you don't, you know, I'm not a Republican on Tuesday and then decide, heck with the party I'm leaving and I'm going to become a Democrat, right? You gradually shift towards a new party. And so usually we see people go to no party preference. But I think another thing at play is um, the automatic voter registration, mm -hmm. right? The new change through the motor vehicles. And so the state cannot choose a party for you. So if you get registered through your mm -hmm. driver's license renewal or vehicle registration and you don't pick a party, mm -hmm. then they have to register you as no party preference. So that's driving up some of that too. And then young people, Teenagers, young people, there's been a lot of pre-registration and high school registration, um, college registration, and those, they don't feel very close to the parties, and so they tend to register no party no preference. Party so preference. I think you see a lot of new voters and not as many shifting voters, like mm -hmm. Tim said. That, that's very, and it's interesting because in this world where things are getting more polarized, mm -hmm. you know, it, more to the left, more to the right, the parties are, yeah. and yet still we see a lot of people saying, like, I don't want to join either one of these clubs mm -hmm. right now. You know, yeah. I, I just, I don't, I don't want to be labeled in any sort of way. The other big story with this race right now, and we talked about it also, $4.3 million for Andrew Jans in the last mm -hmm. quarter. That's a huge haul, Diane. Yeah, it is. And I'm sure, you know, Devin Nunes, it's not like he's hurting for money yeah, either right now. Yeah, and I think now. that's kind of the point. <laughs> I mean, is, is that money, we saw Antonio Villaraigosa raise mm -hmm. a lot of money ahead of getting knocked out of the governor's yeah. race. Do you think that that money can make up some of the differences and some of the deficits he's been seeing in, when it comes to polling? No. I do not. That doesn't surprise me. <laughs> I mean, I can elaborate on that, but well, essentially, please, no. Please, that's why I brought you here. <laughs> um, no, I think that certainly this is the first time where Devin Nunes has had an opponent who had any kind of following and that type of thing, campaign, so to speak, whether you're talking about volunteers or donations or that type of thing. So I'm, it's not that surprising because a lot of times, I think Lisa knows, you know, money follows money. So once you see some gains, you're going to get some more. And he obviously is in a nationally uh, mm -hmm. recognized race. And so a lot of those donations, I mean, and I don't know the internals, but, you know, it's not just coming from the Valley. I'm sure he has some district money coming in, but when you get that kind of national attention, you're going to draw it in from other places, sure. too. And he's certainly getting his fair share of Hollywood money, too. Well, he's taking on a national target. Somebody exactly. Somebody who, mm -hmm. who has national name recognition. Mm -hmm. But I don't remember Devin Nunes campaigning and, and spending all this money and, with, with the, you know, attack ads that we've seen against Andrew Chance. In mm -hmm. this race, he wasn't doing it against, in, against some of his previous opponents. Yeah. He's never example. had to, though. Right. Yeah. right. Yeah, in terms of having a credible opponent. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, this is the first time. Uh, I think since he first ran, this is the first time he's yeah. had credible opposition. And, and, and that kind of leads us into one of the, the, the mailers that went out. You know, I, I live in the district. Mm -hmm. I get a lot of mailers. Yeah. yeah. This is not a mailer. This is a magazine that, that Devin Nunes' campaign put out 
the Fresno Bees. It says uh, it, the dirty little secrets of the Valley's propaganda machine. <laughs> this is now making some national news right now. It's oh. getting it's getting a lot of attention. And Tim, I know you don't really want to talk about this because it doesn't involve your employer. You're, you're happy to sit it, on the it, sideline it, for the most part. It, it comes a little close to home. I mean, <laughs> but it would be hypocritical for for me or for anybody to suggest that the congressman doesn't have the right to publish or spread this <clears throat> material um, because the same First Amendment that protects that right is the same First Amendment that protects your right as a journalist, my right as a journalist, the bee's right as a newspaper to do our reporting and to hold people accountable. Lisa, and, and then now I'll shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Lisa, you tweeted about this and mm -hmm. it got a ton. You, you almost went viral on Twitter <laughs> because you tweeted it with the hashtag, this is not normal. Why, why, is, why is this not normal? Well, a couple, I mean, it's two of the things that you brought up. So one, the size of the magazine. You're right, that is not normal. Yeah. I, that said, is, I said, we were talking yeah. before the show and I said, it's not a mailer, right? It's a publication. Um, so the size of it, I mean, just the cost of it, campaigns don't usually do this kind of... Uh, can advertising, I don't know what you would want to call it, a negative attack ad, um, but also the target, right? So it's not an opposition opponent. It's not, he's not targeting Andrew Jans, he's targeting the B. And so really sort of if you, what we normally see in negative campaigns is that though you get those one mailers about how terrible your opponent is, he's corrupt, he mm -hmm. has no experience, whatever, but that's not what this is, right? This is about that you can't trust the information that's negative about me coming out of the newspaper, the local newspaper. Yeah. So it's, those are the two ways that it's not normal, both the target and the size. Diane, mm -hmm. one thing that I've been seeing a lot of, a response from conservatives, that when, when people on the left get angry about mm -hmm. something like this is that a typical response I've seen is like, People say, oh, come on, stop being so soft about these things. Lighten up a little bit, laugh, it's funny. I've seen that a lot, being like, no, I think this is really funny, is, is what, I've, I've, what I've seen from a lot of people on the right. I hadn't heard that personally, what, the, the funny the, part. That they thought it was funny, like, yeah. like as far as the... I mean, I guess it's, yeah. I actually thought, and I was telling them earlier, I thought the cover did a disservice to the content because I read the whole thing, and I thought it was actually, from just a campaign information standpoint, well laid out because they on you know one page they do their summary of the article that they're complaining about mm -hmm. or what have you but then they have community people or that kind of rebutting parts of it and saying this this is why this isn't true or this is why this was a dangerous thing to have done these attacks on his family how this um, was portrayed or gone about and that type of thing so i thought if you could look at the content objectively you i don't think you'd be upset about it but it is a very provocative cover that I think then colors how you go into it. So maybe as a conservative, I look at the cover and I'm like, oh. yeah, that's right, that's what they're doing to him. And I go in and I'm like, oh my gosh, yes, that point, that point. And you know, if a Democrat picks it up, they're like, I can't believe he's doing this. And then Straight in the fireplace, Yeah, and right? it's like you're, well, and if you look through it, you're just angry about it. Maybe you're ripping sure. the pages out and throwing them in the fireplace, I don't know. But so I, I think the cover really makes it more provocative than the material inside is. Interesting, well, thanks for being here, guys. Stick <laughs> <laughs> we got a lot more to talk about, a lot of issues going on right now. We're going to take a quick break, though. Coming up, he's facing a tough challenge in the South Valley from Republican Justin Mendez. Assemblyman Rudy Salas joins me after the break.